All right, very good. Now, you've got a couple of specialties that I want to talk to you about. Now, one thing that we were talking a little bit before the show, spiritual psychology, like what exactly is going on there? Like what does that mean? Like explain to our listeners because that's that seems like a very vague term, right, when you hear it. And just, you know, it's hard to like really put your heads or put our head around it. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So spiritual psychology, um, also known as transpersonal psychology, um, essentially it's basically the cross section of, you know, the study of the self, you know, the mental processes of the human being, emotions, behaviors, etc. But also keeping in mind that there is a spiritual dimension to the human condition, um, which isn't necessarily present in a lot of modern models uh, of psychology and the approach to the human condition, which I think is um, one of the concerns when you do have, mashallah, like more Muslims going into the field, uh, they're actually being indoctrinated um, by many concepts and principles about the human condition, which if you look closely to them, um, they contradict some of the values of, for example, the Quranic worldview, right? So my whole thing has been, well, let's make sure that psyche is not removed out of psychology, because psyche in ancient Greek actually means soul and self. In fact, it has many of the same meanings as nefs does in Arabic. I think a, a very simple way to understand, you know, transpersonal spiritual psychology is, is exactly what you said. In other words, you have an extra layer of meaning and resources and guidance for the human experience. So as soon as you take religion and spirituality out of the picture, that that's no longer a technology that you can access anymore, right? And when that happens, um, I, I think what happens is you, you fall now into what I call the horizontal plane of existence. In other words, your whole life's meaning and what you're pursuing and how you're going to find fulfillment and the standards you're living up to, i.e., you know, being a player is cool and, and you know, um, uh, hitting the the highest part of the social hierarchy that you happen to be a part of is basically all you focus on. Um, it takes away from exactly what the term transpersonal means, which means beyond your personhood, right? Beyond yourself. So it actually in, enhances the radius of which you interpret and make meaning of your own existence and, of course, the world. And if you have, of course, religion and spirituality in your life, you recognize that there is more to your reality than just the material or horizontal um, causations or effects, if you will. So this individual that you're speaking about, I mean, he's doing something that is, you know, quite natural, right? Because we're social creatures um, in high school uh, work. All of these are basically social structures where for the first time the human being um, can actually start to navigate their sense of existence and value in the world. And so if I grew up in a high school where being cool meant being a player and doing drugs and, you know, hooking up with as many women as possible, then that might be something that I, you know, go towards because that is the meaning that has been established by the social structure. And people who don't fall into some of these groups or, you know, um, tribes, if you will, uh, they're the ones that are considered alienated or outside, right, of, of what is considered a society in high school. So I think, you know, high school is definitely one of the first places where any individual um, really kind of tests their sense of value and the predictability of their future survival in the world, because high school is kind of a microcosm for the greater society that we live in. What's this uh, horizontal plane that you were talking about? That, because it seemed like you were talking about the horizontal plane is something that uh, after you strip Islam and, and all the... Uh, the other concepts from you or from the self, the horizontal plane is basically the, the core being of you, if, if I'm understanding it correctly. Try to explain it to me like I'm five years old uh, is, is what I'm trying to say. The, the, so if we use kind of the analogy of, you know, um, you know, the horizontal plane is basically when you consider life to be only what you see in front of you, right? So okay. in other words, if I have anxiety about, you know, uh, money, my anxiety comes from the fact that I'm thinking, man, the bills are too high and I'm not getting paid enough or my, I'm not going to get that raise or what if I don't get a job out of college? And all the anxiety comes from just thinking about the horizontal mechanisms or processes, right? In other words, I get money because I have to get a job, which is true. But as Mu'minin, for example, we have the vertical 
and the internal, right? Vertical is Iman and recognizing that, you know, there is a, a source that, that controls and generates every atom in the universe and that this is a source that we also harness when we need material things, not just the material procedures, but also the, the metaphysical procedures as well. So when you take that out, now you really believe that everything in the world comes to you because of the world, rather than recognizing the world is a means for the creator of the world. SubhanAllah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, so, uh, and that, you know, you brought up an amazing point, um, working with the, the reality in front of you, and that that's something that we need to, every one of us have to, have to work on in terms of um, dealing with everyday anxieties and, and pressures. And, and when you, when you look at the reality that's ahead of you or, or right in front of you, and instead, instead of worrying about, you know, the ifs and what, well, what if I lose my job or what if, and, and making decisions based on these, what ifs, you know, that causes so many problems that can damage your life. Yeah. And, and I think, I think exactly what you're talking about, just to add on to that, um, I think what gave the 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 prophets prophethood one of the characteristics within Ibn Ibrahim alayhi salam that made him gave him the title Hanif is he was able to see things for what they are. Right. That's mm. what that's a very very difficult thing us as human beings to have dealt with ever since humans were born seeing things for what they actually are because you can avoid yeah. lots of things lots of psychiatric issues lots of spiritual issues and the soul and everything. And all of the above, if you can see things for what they are. You know, and I, I, I was having this conversation with my, with my daughter recently. I was trying to explain to her, we can say that, you know, we can say, look for, look at things for what they really are. Yeah. But if you're not a truthful person, you're right. You're not going to ever see the, the thing for what it really is. For what it really is. It's not going to be, the truth will not be apparent to you because you're, you're so used to deceiving yourself. Yeah. And, and that's, and, I, that's, I mean, it's a, it's an elementary concept that we're taught not right. to lie. The reason why we're not taught to lie in Islam is because you'll eventually, that domino effect of you won't even know what's real and what's not eventually. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us don't forget Allah right. or else he'll in turn make you forget yourself, right? And right. a lot of that has to be not truthful. I mean, it seems very simple, just a simple lie, but that tells you something about the self, right? The self is used to hiding things, you know, of, and then that becomes a manifestation, right? It, it was, I was just wanted to add to that. It's so fascinating that, you know, the example, for example, of being honest, you know, that it's actually not easy to be dishonest. Like it takes a lot of practice and skills to be able to lie through your teeth and keep a straight face and not have your heart rate go up and, you know, your body temperature yeah. rise, right? And subhanAllah, this is like a divine mechanism right. that when we are going That's against true. the sacred, there's actual, you know, built-in mechanisms that don't respond so well, you yeah. see? And this goes back to the concepts that we have like fitra, right? The natural disposition that we believe in. Uh, the human uh, being good and inclined towards what is sacred and, and good and true and beautiful. And so I, I kind of, my geeky way of terming this is T of AR, the true perception of actual reality, because there's two parts to that, right? The can first you say, I'm sorry, can you, you, got, you got cut our, off. Can you say the acronym one more time, please? Yes, oh, yeah. TP of AR, TP true, true of AR. perception okay. of actual reality. Hmm. So because there's two parts, right, to at least from, from a psychological standpoint is, okay, my perceptive frameworks, which is how I make meaning of existence in the world, are they true, right, or are they deluded in and of themselves? Because if that's the case, then I'm not, it's going to be very difficult for me to extract, you know, truth or meaning or beauty. And then there's of actual reality, because reality is also rel relative to my perceptive frameworks. So you need to have both. Right. Understand what actual reality is, which is what I think, you know, sacred teachings offer humankind, at least from, you know, a religious standpoint. And then true perception, which is goes back to being honest and sincere within your own subjective, you know, processes of making meaning of the world. And, and the kind of one example that I would love to always share from Quran is it's so fascinating to me how, you know, um, you have people that the NBA basically gave them miracles and showed them things, you know, that was so clear that they were trustworthy and honest people with their claim of, of prophecy. And there were still people who perceived it and said, no, that's magic or that's false or I don't, I don't buy it. Right. Mm -hmm. And it just goes to show you the power of the mind and the power of how the human being makes meaning 
of his existence. And that's really one of the spaces I'm very fascinated by because in the end of the day, it always comes down to how we make meaning of things, how we interpret, what's our intentions. That's how you can get groups that, you know, do horrible, horrendous things and they read from the same religious text and you get people who don't do those things at all, but they're also drawing meaning and values from the same religious text. Yeah, and just just to summarize that for 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 the listeners is that you know if you don't understand the reality correctly, you're making all the decisions based on a false reality. Um, I, I always talk about you know but the this binge watching culture where we you know watch shows after shows through Netflix, and we're we're having a generation being raised based off of false data, stuff that's not real, and they're going to be making decisions based on scenarios that they've seen in movies and TV shows because they haven't gone out and right. and well, met with real human beings and haven't had real world interactions. You know, these these are real problems that are or that will manifest if they haven't already. We're, we're probably seeing yeah. some of the 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 birth pangs of these uh, this type of behavior and this type of culture that we're kind of um, cultivating here. Yeah, Kareem, you know, totally. I'd like to get, to, again, to tie it back to practicality. You know, obviously, we're not talking about names here, but when you when your clients come to you with issues in the context of spiritual psychology, like, what are, like, the top two or three issues that, you know, are, are they coming, are, are they kids, are they, like, parents dealing with their kids who have identity crises and stuff? Um, you know, what, what's going, what's really going on on the ground floor here? I mean, there's a lot of things, but... Um you know, just to share three, um, I think number one is there's there's a general lack of literacy in the Islamic tradition, right? Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, it's not like, oh, people don't pray or, or go to the mosque and listen to lectures and, and watch stuff. But I feel like, you know, um, if you're not able to extract um, values and principles that are relevant to your life, then, you know, what exactly is the point? So, for example, when, I, I mean, uh, may Allah for, forgive us uh, all and guide us all because we all have our challenges, but, you know, simple example, it's like, you know, a family contacts me and they're really struggling with some of their, you know, children. Um, our children are smoking weed and they got girlfriends and we don't know what to do. We don't know what went wrong. And, and I'm asking some follow-up questions. Okay, so what's what's the story? Are they in college? Are they at home? Oh, they're, they're at home. They're not even in school. Okay, are they working? Yes, they're working. Okay, where are they working? They're working with, in the family business. Okay, what's the family business? We sell alcohol. Oh, wow. You know, and it's like, subhanAllah, I mean, to me, it's very common. It's common sense. It's very clear. It's like, where's the barakah? But for some Muslims out there, that and these are Muslims that are still, you know, they love Allah and His Messenger, you know, to, to the degree that they, you know, they do. And Allah knows best. They they are involved with the communities and so on and so forth. But there are cases, for example, like this. And uh, it's like, okay, hasn't the boat, you know, so hasn't, sometimes you got to go back to the foundations. Hasn't the boat sailed with those type of people who contact you and tell them, tell you about, like, um, you know, their, their kids straying off the uh, the good path, basically. Yeah, because the kid's know? like 20 years old, right? 21, right? Yeah, I mean, not even, well, what, what, what kind of repair are you going to do now? You know, even as a counselor or as a mentor or whatever role they want you to be for, for this child's life, uh, what kind of repair can be done at that point? Well, there can always be a possibility for transformation, right? We know this. Um, if there wasn't, then really there's no point to most of the kind of psychological um, uh, themes in our dean. Um, so I don't, I don't necessarily think it's, you know, this, the ship has sailed, but it's definitely very far away from the dock and it's going to take time for it to come back to the dock and get back on land and get grounded again, you know, but, um, there are, are there other cases where similarly, you know, you may have younger people who, um, had a very difficult, uh, time being aligned to sacred values or the Islamic tradition, but alhamdulillah, you know, of course with hidayah from Allah and, um, some sincerity, uh, they were able to kind of realign their lives with, you know, what really matters, if you will. 